What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of That Creative Life with my homie Super Saf. Woo! Did you take away the TV and Super Saf TV? Are you I, I are you only Super Saf? Now? Well, generally, I'm only Super Saf. I still use it on the channel because okay. it, it's kind. Of, it's just because it's my intro, right? Yes, yes it's yes. Saf on Super Saf TV, right? right. So I want to make sure I get that branding right. Yeah, just Super Saf's fine. Super Saf. Let's just stick to that. So sick. Okay, we have some <laughs> special guests behind you as well. If uh, you guys are watching the video version on. <laughs> the youtube subscribe or sponsor what's it called guys who knows is it the youtube sponsor thing so that's where the full episodes are going mm. now um but y'all y'all's channel Go. so uh, <clears throat> colonel singala from boy <laughs> <at work>. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! yay uh, and david from the unlocker Amazing. So they'll be in the background uh, behind Saf, just making funny faces, doing some work on the new uh, razor blade. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a very they, they, pretty They machine. go wherever I go. They yes. just don't leave me. We're, we're your posse. Yeah. Yes, it's good to yeah. roll deep Groupies. with a posse. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So for some perspective for the audience, we're going to be talking about tech, but who are you? When did you start your YouTube channel? You passed a million subscribers recently. Yeah, recently. Which is huge. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Thank I you. mean, that's amazing. Um, so when did you start your YouTube journey? What what kind of videos do you make? So um, it's actually going to be seven years in uh, See, January. People don't realize it's a journey. It's a long, long journey. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's a long time ago. I actually started making videos because um, I, I picked up a DSLR camera and I was taking lots of pictures and just sharing them online. And I had so many people kind of ask me for advice like, oh, which camera should we buy? Should we buy a Nikon or Nikon? whichever you want to say, or Canon. Tomato, right? tomato. Yeah. Well, now it's nothing in regards yeah, it's to nothing, Nikon, right, right. because just... rest in peace, Nikon, you <laughs> fell behind with the times. <laughs> it used thing. to be Canon versus Nikon, it but now it's, it's just no nothing for Nikon. Yeah, Anyways. yeah. well, Sony's kind of, uh, this is something we're talking about a mm. lot. Sony's doing so great when it comes yeah. to videos, but they're not giving us a flip out display, which is so annoying. Maybe. Well, this is the thing. Maybe. I mean, I'm ready. My money is ready, Sony. So yeah. if you're watching this. We got like $3,500 yeah, in the corner I'm, I'm, for that A7S III. <laughs> I'm ready to throw my money at you, Sony. So yeah. just give us something good. Yes. But yeah, so at the time, so I, I picked up a camera and I was just posting pictures and just kind of learning. I mean, I didn't really have any professional training mm -hmm. uh, in photography or video, but I just was posting like short trades and just things that because I was really interested in photography and filmmaking and uh, because so many people were asking me for advice I was just like okay um, I was typing out emails and just kind of like writing really long messages to people and I just thought you know what let me just make a video and my first video was actually uh, Nikon versus Canon like which nice. should you get uh, and that's where the whole versus thing started and those videos restarted doing well because people would ask me for advice about mm -hmm which camera should they go for? And I was just doing these comparisons. And then because smartphones started to get so popular and these days, like nobody uses, most general people don't have a separate camera. Their smartphone is their camera. Yep. And one of the formats that I kind of started up, uh, and I believe I was one of the first at the time anyway to do uh, a format like that was uh, a camera comparison, which was completely side by side. And I just gave it a tag of Super Saf style camera comparison. Super Saf style. Yeah, so that kind of really stuck. Uh, so what I would, the concept of that was testing in detail uh, two smartphone cameras. So this is talking from everything. So front facing camera, rear facing camera, images, video, uh, audio as well. This is These are things that I didn't really see anybody else doing at the time. So I thought if I want to buy a camera, like a smartphone, and I want to see what the camera's like, I want to see what it's like for everything. Side um, by side. Yeah. And yeah, if yeah. you guys haven't checked out his videos, obviously check them out. They're amazing. Yeah. But you literally put the phone side by side. So when yeah. you first started doing this, there probably wasn't a rig for this, right? Like how uh. did you, did you like tape the phones <laughs> together? <laughs> so uh, initially what I used to do is literally just hold them both. Yeah like just in front of me wow. uh because now that. they're super steady oh yeah yeah now i've like, got like a then i kind of like built a diy rig yeah uh just kind of uh, did it myself just bought lots of little bits and just kind of attached it and then made a rig of two mm -hmm. uh cameras side by side uh i mean I, I haven't been posting them as much as i'd like to they're very very labor intensive i'm not sure if you've tried to do one before yeah i mean I've done videos before that are like iPhone versus Pixel versus Note versus, you know, another thing. Because I try to just combine them all into one. Mm -hmm. And I essentially just give up halfway through. And I'm just like, well, this was fun. <laughs> so honestly, I try to limit them to two because yeah. for... 
I know that the smartphone thing is a part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the only thing I do. Mm -hmm. So I feel like when I do them, it's like a part of my duty, right? It's like, this is what will get people to the channel, but it's not necessarily the most fulfilling thing for me mm -hmm. um, because they are so intense they all you they know because you want to make sure you do the audience right you want to make sure people mm. have the right comparisons you want to zoom into certain things and stuff make sure you know because people will complain about sharpness I, oh and yeah how are the edges and i'm like Everything. guys you guys are so concerned but there, i guess that's our it. job right yeah, this is it <laughs> and i think this is the thing because I, I get asked a lot of times that saf why why do you only do two in one video and when it comes to video i mean images yes you can compare like maybe three or maybe four images side by side when it comes to video mm -hmm. comparing four side it's by side impossible. it's just it's just it's just yeah. crazy which is why um because i do cover video as well in my comparisons um that's that's the reason why i always stick to two and that's something that you obviously look at a lot i've seen the videos that you do you look mm -hmm. at video in particular as yeah. well because that's your that's area that's usually my focus yeah. yeah and that's something that i find a lot of people because they'll be like hey the pixel's amazing for camera i'm like but yes. the video though exactly that's, oh exactly. my gosh when i made my video about it yeah. everyone was saying so many nice things so i i went into it with the most open mind ever yeah um and because a lot of my workflow is in google stuff google drives all those things so like accepting a google phone isn't crazy for me yeah. or an android phone um but the video aspect is yeah. so important that just simple things like the audio being so tinny and terrible yes, exactly and the image being so jello-y yeah. i'm like this i would never use this phone and this is a 850 dollar phone mm -hmm. and this is the type of video you're gonna put in it yeah. like the pictures are amazing yeah but this but, is this is the thing so then when you get people like everybody will be talking about the google pixel camera mm -hmm. which hands down it's one of the best out there for images mm -hmm. and this is something that i always put a disclaimer in whenever i'm talking about the pixel i'm like it's great for images super sharp yeah. fantastic amazing great but when it comes to video not so much and this is why like personally i love the iphone for video because uh they also have the multi-frame image processing mm -hmm. in video as well as images so you get amazing dynamic range so i've actually put them side by side so the iphone 10 max versus the google pixel 3 xl and it's night and day the difference mm -hmm. because of the video uh that apple has concentrated on whereas i think on the Google side, uh, this is something that I mentioned in my comparison. It looks like video was very much an afterthought. Mm -hmm. It's like all about images. And fair enough, I think most people probably do use their smartphones for images more than video, but it is something definitely to bear in mind. Yeah, because think about how many people are whipping out their phones, not just us who do this for a living, but capturing their baby, doing something cute. And yeah. like, if the audio is terrible, it just yeah. ruins everything. It does. You it know? Does. Um, so going back to there's always this debate, right? Yeah. iPhone versus Android, Mac yeah. versus PC. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned something interesting before we started recording. Yeah. You might be easing into the Apple ecosystem a little bit. Tell well, me about that. See, I've always been, I'd always, I always consider myself a, a multi-platform user. Yeah. Uh, just because like, so I- You kind of have to be for the videos be. we make. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I generally always have um, an Android device in my pocket as well as an iPhone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just to kind of, and, and there's certain things I like, as I was mentioning earlier on, when it comes to video, I'll always take out my iPhone because mm -hmm. I love the video quality on the iPhone, but uh, it can very- Freaking Windows on, machine making- it's, You know what I mean? No, it's, it's, like, it's literally, it's like, I'm telling you, that's, that's uh, something <laughs> that I just can't get used to. I have it all turned off my laptops. Yeah. So I got to do it for my main gear PC, mm. but randomly, they'll yeah. just be like, doo -doo -doo, you have yeah. an update or yeah. like, oh, there's this Logitech plugin. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't care. See, Anyways, this, as yeah. you were saying. <laughs> the so there's there's advantages and disadvantages on both sides. And the only way you can stay on top of those mm -hmm. is by using both mm -hmm. uh, properly. As in not just that, oh, I've just got one because it's here. No, I, I, I genuinely use both. You have to be both. immersed in it. And there's things that I like about both as well. And uh, Because the videos that I make, again, I have to be flexible mm -hmm. uh, and be able to kind of comment on both as well. So that's the reason why. So I'm, I'm kind of flexible between the two. Uh, but one area that I've not really been like too, I've not used much really uh, is on the side of when, when it comes to MacBooks uh, and Final Cut. Mm. So I've traditionally mm. been a, a Premiere Pro user for a very long time. But recently I've kind of like certain things have been frustrating me. So for instance, when there was an update, um, export times Buggy. were just 
yeah, it's just <clears throat> so crazy how slow everything went. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that I had to update my uh, graphics card driver mm -hmm. uh, to kind of sync everything up. Uh, but again, I didn't have like, it wasn't something that popped up or like I had to manually yeah. kind of go on, find out what the hell was wrong with it. And, you know, doing what we do, we don't have time to do that stuff. You, yeah. you, your workflow is so intense that you kind of can't be dealing with stuff like that. And that's why people hate when people say Max just work, right? Yeah. They hate that saying, yeah. but it's the truth. When yeah. companies are building software for a closed system mm -hmm. where you're only designing for one operating system with one type of laptop. And I mean, there's obviously more, yeah. but it's so much easier to of course. Optimize and, and do stuff like that. I mean, Premiere traditionally has been optimized more for the NVIDIA graphics and stuff. So that's when you're gonna run into, oh, you gotta update. But you don't have to update drivers in a in a Mac computer. That's that's what I've learned the past year. It was like, oh, my headphone's not working, so I have to uninstall real tech audio and reinstall it and see if that works. And then I have to blah blah blah. Uh, and just NVIDIA graphics card's not working. Yeah. And it's just like and that, that troubleshooting, like you just don't have time for it, yeah. right? Uh, so, I mean, I've, I've been using a bit of Final Cut uh, recently uh, and I like it. So I do want to spend some more time with it just so it's something that I can like use and mm -hmm. see how it is in comparison. So I can really see if it's going to work from, if it's going to work for me and it's going to match my workflow, then it's genuinely something that I'm considering right now. So yeah. What was your first impression of Final Cut? Because I, so I started in Final Cut 7, mm -hmm. loved it. Yeah. Final Cut Pro user, woo, like gonna yeah. be on this until the day I die. <clears throat> and then Final Cut 10 happened and I was mm -hmm. like, what is this? Uh, it was such a uncomfortable jolt. It yeah. was so different. Mm -hmm. um, nothing felt familiar. And the thing that killed me was the magnetic timeline. Like. Mm -hmm. It, it sounds so simple, but I love being able to just like grab some footage and like put it over later in my timeline to like maybe worry about later. And the fact that, I know you can turn this off now, but the fact that when I grabbed a clip okay. from yeah. the fudging project folder and I, and I dropped it on the timeline and it just snapped to my last clip instead of leaving it over here or whatever. Yeah, yeah. That was insane to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Oh my gosh, it was mm. just night and day. So, mm. I mean, what what were some of the things in Final Cut that initially took a lot of time to get used to? Um, so I'm still kind of very um, new to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm still getting familiar with it, but generally speaking, initially, it was pretty, like, everything seemed to be pretty straightforward. Like, mm -hmm. cause I'm coming from Premiere, everything seemed to be sort of like, okay, I can just get on it and start working. So I'll still have to be spending some more time with it mm -hmm. to give a proper view. So nothing was, I, I tried no, it recently and I yeah. was like, oh no. No, so you're, I, just, I you, still don't like you, it. No, I hate, I'll tell you now. This could be a whole nother podcast just yeah. me talking about. <laughs> I, I hate the little, um, you know, you add a text layer, or like an audio effect and it has a little line going up okay. to like show you where it's attached to or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the way it just like snaps to things, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I can ever get used to it. Okay. Um, well, maybe when next time we meet and I would, would have spent some more time yeah. with Final we Cut. We do like a collab with getting Premiere yeah. user on Final Cut. Yeah. And mm. half the video could be me like Just tearing out my hair and then about everything. Yeah. the yeah. other half could you, you can swoop in and save yeah. the day. We'll see. <laughs> Sounds like a collab. Yeah. But yeah, with the recent Premiere update, apparently it has updates with, um, Intel graphics, mm -hmm. which will make it faster on the MacBook, hopefully. Okay. Um, because my experience, whenever I render something from a PC laptop with like a similar uh, processor, it just kind of destroys it compared to Premiere on a MacBook. So I look forward to that getting better. Um, but I think Premiere needs to let out less buggy updates. Mm. I always recommend people to wait yeah when they release a huge new like 13.0 yeah. wait guys yeah. no. wait 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 um so recently mm -hmm. there's been a lot of phones coming out yes a lot of phones so i'm gonna read off a list of phones mm -hmm. and you tell me one word or one sentence that comes to your mind okay putting you on the spot all right go for it pixel 3 great camera for images iphone 10r iPhone 10R. 
Um, oh no, did the stump, <laughs> did this this stump sue for <laughs> Um Good overall. Yeah. That's what I'm using. Well, I know why you're using that. That's It's Peach. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> you've got your reasons. <laughs> exactly. Huawei P20 Pro. Huawei P20 Pro, uh, a good all-rounder. Samsung Note 9. The best all-rounder, in my opinion. Mm. Red Hydrogen 1. Ooh, that's that's a flop. <laughs> I'm flop. sorry. Just flop. Like, no. <laughs> Palm. Palm, I haven't tested yet. But it's gonna... crazy looking, yeah. isn't it? It is. So um, if you guys don't know what the palm looks like, you got to Google it. It's basically probably smaller than the yeah. size of your palm. Yeah. I mean, it's tiny. And it was so funny that uh, Steph Curry was like the poster boy for that. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah, Have you guys not... tried out the palm? Mm -hmm. How was it? I weirdly like it. Yeah? Yeah. It, it's, I shouldn't like it. I really should not. You really should not. It's, I should like <laughs> it, but for some reason I do because I can take it with me to the gym. Right. Mm. And it's just, it's cute. Right. It's right. cute. It's cute. It's cute. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm sure there's a, there's a market for it. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. So funny. So with your phone comparisons mm -hmm. and, and all of that, you know, those probably pop more for people just because people are very curious with what is the latest and greatest phone? What do I need? Yeah. But what was your first moment of, oh, this could be a, a career. This could be what I do. What was that first video that popped off? Because you you said seven yeah. years, right? Yeah. I mean, so this is the thing because uh, I talk about this a lot. Like some YouTubers have like a moment where it's like one video goes viral and they're like, oh, this could be, it. I never had that. Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was always, you know, I had some videos that did decent, but I never had a, a video that did crazy well or like, oh yeah, this is going to be changing. So it was a gradual. So it was build. very gradual. And I think that was good for me as well, because it kind of made me appreciate that this is a long-term game. It's mm -hmm. not something that, you know, uh, is short term because I find a lot of others who maybe have a, a one or two viral videos, they keep trying to chase that, you know, they try to, they try to repeat that mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to do. And if they don't have a flow before they're exactly, screwed. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So then, I mean, for me, I, I don't think there was a single like moment as such. It was just me constantly making videos uh, over time mm -hmm. and growing over time as well. Uh, and as I said, like the, the million subscribers was like after almost six and a half years of uploading videos pretty consistently uh, overall like at least once a week uh, and doing that for that period of time to reach that milestone. So yeah. Wow. How long have you been full-time YouTuber? Just a uh, year and a half now. I only year quit my job half? last year. What was your job? This is so, This I was actually working as a multimedia designer at a university in marketing. Oh. So it was the university where I actually uh, graduated from as well. So nice. I started working there, I was doing 3D animation and flash adobe flash wow. i was an expert i was nice. an expert in adobe flash yeah back in the day uh and then i kind of realized that was dying so this is yeah. why i kind of picked up a camera Pivot. and just thought yeah just yeah. thought let's let's uh explore other creative areas because hey that's what we have to do you have to adapt in in our field as you know you can't just be doing the same thing that you were doing five years ago uh, because it's changing. You're going to be left the in the dust. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Environment changes so much. Uh, so this is why I kind of picked up a camera because I saw online video was, was getting so popular and it was something that I was very much interested in as well. Uh, and it was actually funny because I used to post stuff online mm -hmm. and one of my managers at the time saw some of that and asked me to cover an event uh, because the main photographer, uh, photographer couldn't make it. Uh, they actually really liked my work and it eventually just became my role was to oh, do cool. video photography and social media because that's just what I was um, good at. And it was really interesting because I had a crossover in the stuff that I was doing outside of mm -hmm. work as well. And it kind of complemented each other as well. And it was one of the reasons why I didn't leave for so long. Because you were um, getting paid to build your skills basically, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was really enjoying that as well. Uh, and because I was doing it for so long, I was just kind of like a little bit scared about, you know, how is it going to be if I'm if I'm all on my own? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be really oh, it's lonely? Scary, right? It is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, 
eventually things worked out and here i am like a year and a half on and it's a great decision thankfully yeah. being in the uk hmm. is there a squad like a youtube squad you hang out with um so there's other youtubers uh there isn't see i'm i'm more close to a lot of the guys here as mm -hmm. you can see behind me <laughs> <laughs> squad yeah yeah <clears throat> so uh so we do have a few creators there uh um we're, we're pretty far apart uh, as well so we do we do a few things together mm -hmm. but i find uh a lot of the guys working in a similar area are here uh, across the pond uh, which is why i'm here so often yeah. as well you can and meet up for events which is nice yeah, yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean like with these guys like we've been in la and right. we were in hawaii and now we're here right. in new york so, so sick yeah like I'm, why I'm were you in <laughs> hawaii <laughs> So it was Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon oh, Tech Summit. Oh, right. I've been yeah, seeing the tweets. So, so yeah. So because that was on, we just thought it'd be a good excuse to um, go to LA as well mm -hmm. beforehand and do some collaboration. So yeah. met up with Austin Evans, who's hey awesome. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. This is Austin. <laughs> um, and also Justine, who's, who's She's amazing. amazing. She's the yeah. best. So uh, went over, kind of hung out with them and uh just did some collaborations Epic. and then then went over to hawaii for the qualcomm snapdragon summit uh that was again really good there was a lot of creators there yeah. as well and it was exciting to see and hear about the process uh the chipset which is going to be in pretty much every android flagship hmm. next year how do you make coverage of a event like that like cool because honestly that's interesting i'm like i was seeing tweets and stuff i'm yeah. like that's cool you you guys are in hawaii but i mean people aren't going to be interested until it's in a phone so <laughs> this this is why they call us over right yeah, yeah, so yeah. what actually happened is um we've been doing this two years in a row but i was actually there with qualcomm and i took over their instagram account uh and the idea behind that was so you were quite literally in charge of yeah, making this exciting that's it um and, <laughs> no you know, pressure yeah well <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, so for me what i did is um so what we did is kind of like i got some of the other creators involved and kind of asked them like what is your favorite feature mm -hmm. because you're going to be getting lots of stuff and one of the areas i think you'd particularly be interested in what we've got portrait mode right now on for, uh, smartphones for images but now with the 855 you'll have portrait mode for video interesting so you'll get like a bokeh effect or bokeh yeah. effect in video uh so you can do 30 frames a second at 4k interesting which is so so i mean features like that there's an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner so you know say for instance right now in display fingerprint scanners i'm not sure if you've tested a few i haven't yeah but did the oneplus have one oneplus yeah. uh, 60 has it i've got the mate 20 pro here that has it and realistically speaking, they're not great. Uh, and I've I've uh, tweeted about this as well. That's the dream, right? No yeah. chin, no bezels, yeah. just put just it right there. there and boom. Now, another thing about that is they currently use uh, like it's optical fingerprint scanners. So they're 2D, which means they're not great. Like mm -hmm. hit and miss sometimes. Right. I personally <laughs> would prefer a physical one at the back than mm -hmm. what we have right now. The ultrasonic is a 3D fingerprint. It's actually using 3D mapping. So if you if your fingers are wet, should still work. You know, if mm -hmm. if you've got some like stuff on your fingers, or whatever, it still should work, and it should it's supposed to be a lot faster and a lot more efficient. So kind of hearing about lots of these features and how they will hopefully come into a lot of the smartphones that we're going to be having next year. Um, it's quite interesting and breaking that down into kind of more more of a simpler form. Uh, a lot of people are excited and uh, the coverage that we had on Instagram uh, last year and this year I mean it was some of the most uh, engaged posts that they've ever had which was a great thumbs up for Amazing. me yes. <laughs> so so again it, that that's how it, uh, you know being in Hawaii as well uh, with the creators is, mm -hmm. it just makes things a lot more interesting uh, talking about what's up what's what's yeah. coming soon What's the dream feature for you? What's still not there? What's still not there? That's uh. Is it possible? Like, I feel like, are we reaching the point of no return? We're like, okay, we don't need to upgrade our phones anymore. Well, here's the thing. I mean, there's so many like smartphones right now all have different things, uh, which are great. So f for instance, right now, the smartphone in my pocket, which has been for the past month because I've been traveling, is the Mate 20 Pro. 
the reason for that is battery life. It's got amazing battery life. And now if you ask anybody who used the Mate 20 Pro, uh, Marquez did his review recently, uh, Michael Fisher, uh, Mr. Mobile did his review recently as well. And they all mentioned how good the battery life is. And I was like, I totally agree with you because I'm easily getting all day. Uh, and that's with currently two SIMs inside as well. So it's got the dual SIM functionality. It's got great battery life. Um, I can't say that about lots of other phones. Mm -hmm. right? That's one of the reasons why I didn't switch from the 10R either was, yeah. okay, you're missing the OLED display, yeah. but you kind of get used to the LCD, yeah. but it literally, like I could notice a difference between mm -hmm. one to two hours of battery life that yeah. it makes a difference when you're at the end of the day in your last leg, mm -hmm. you don't have to pull out that battery pack. Oh yeah. That's good. Huge right? difference. So it's Huge like difference. maybe phones need to stop getting thinner and the yeah. batteries just get better. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's not just about the size of the battery. It's about efficiency as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and like, for example, cameras, right? So the Mate 20 Pro has great rear facing cameras. It's got three. So you've got telephoto, crazy. you've got regular and you've got wide angle. Wide angle, I absolutely love mm -hmm. just being on the Manhattan bridge on the way here and just got some really epic shots, which you wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. But the front facing camera sucks. And this is where I'd like something like the iPhone front facing camera or the Pixel front facing camera. And as we were talking I about- I love the wide selfie on the oh, Pixel. Yeah. I'm like, come on, Apple. Yeah. That would be so easy to just add in a, exactly. an update or but something. But this is the thing though, like having all of these bits, but then again, with the Pixel, it's it's got great cameras for images, but not for video. I like the video on the iPhone. And then here's the thing, there's so much good out there, but it's not all in one package. Exactly, because that would be too much. They Yeah. Because then we stop buying phones. This is the so. thing. So there's always like something missing. Like I think in my in my top, so my top five uh, smartphones of the year, uh, I mentioned the Note 9, I would say is the best all rounder, mm -hmm. which ticks the most boxes. It has good battery life too. Yeah, when, I was, life. when I was using that, I was like, yeah. oh, this is it's a huge good. phone with a yeah. good battery. But it's, I think it's it's a great all rounder, which is why it was my daily driver for uh, the largest part. And wow. it was kind of my overall pick yeah. as the best smartphone. How was the Casey Neistat edition Note oh, 9? Oh, sick, yeah, really good. Was it cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. really good. Um, yeah, I just posted a short video about yeah, it as so well. So it has a clear back, right? Yes, and then it, it has Casey handwriting. Yeah. And what do you think about the situation? A huge company like Samsung mm. making a creator edition of a phone. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I'd love to partner with Samsung to create a super <laughs> Samsung, edition. Samsung, let's all make yeah, Samsung phones. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was, I, I, I think Samsung is a brand that I, I really like the fact that they work with creators um the do what you can't campaign that mm -hmm. they had that's that's what i came over for when i quit my mm -hmm. job oh um, so that was kind of the initial yeah so i mean it's, cool. it's, it's it's a funny story because i was trying to get time off and they said you can't and the campaign was do what you can't or do what you can't as you yes like to and say. so you were like see a job so i kind of took that as a sign I and you know I, I i quit and i came in it was the best like mm -hmm. you know i was just saying uh, when when I met Justine, it was just like I came over here and I was like oh, I didn't really didn't know what to expect, but then I was hanging out with Casey, Justine, everybody here, and it was awesome. And I was just like I totally made the right decision. Everybody in the community is so awesome. Uh, but yeah, I mean Samsung working with creators, you know, in that respect and like with this Casey Neistat edition, uh, raising money for the Boys and Girls Club, they raised over one hundred eighty five thousand dollars, which is an amazing. This is like within a day. And I was just like so happy to be a part of it. Like I love that Casey does so much. Um, like we were there at the Winter Wonderland. Yeah, it's remember crazy. seeing those kids' faces? Yeah, yeah, it was like, awesome. Priceless. Like yeah. you just you just can't like that was in a, that was deja vu by the way because I was in Hawaii and I got a call from Paul and he's like, hey, <laughs> can you come to Milwaukee? So I went back again. I stayed for one day in wow. the UK and then I came back to Milwaukee and I was so tired, but it was so worth it. Yeah, again seeing you know, a brand and a creator coming together. Mm -hmm. Firstly, just, just that partnership is amazing, but when it's for a good cause, it's like, wow, Cherry it's just, it's, it's just yeah. perfect collaboration. So yeah, I mean, with this as well, uh, getting all the toys for the kids and raising that much money, uh, it's awesome. And I, and I hope Samsung do more uh, things like this with the creators. Yeah, it's Definitely. crazy to see brands come into this space and actually embrace creators yeah. and their creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know if putting on the spot, you don't have to answer this, but what are some of the favorite brands that you've worked with and like why? Because 
Yeah. In this podcast, I talk a lot about the behind the scenes of like mm -hmm. actually being a YouTuber, yeah. doing the dirty work, like answering the emails, doing the doing the brand deals, right? Because it's a big part of making a living on it this is. platform. It is. And I think a lot of the audience has matured to understand that. And mm -hmm. if you're working with people that really gel with your brand, then yeah. Heck yeah, it's it's a home run. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it just doesn't mesh. So yeah. whether you have a really good experience or maybe not so good of experience, what's kind of your experience with working with brands? Yeah, so I mean, generally speaking, um, like I, 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 as we all have, I, I'm not gonna mention any particular <laughs> names, but- We want you know, names, we want names specific exposed. names and people. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been good experiences, there's been bad experiences. Um, you know, like working with Samsung has been great. D brand is another sponsor that I've had from, you know, a very long time who have been very cons consistent and very, they're very flexible as well. And I love that because they kind of like, you're the creator, you create. Right? Yeah, they don't want to awesome. kind of affect your creativity and kind of dictate yeah. what they want. I've always wondered about D brand, even when it's not technically a sponsored video, mm. do you guys have affiliate links? Where you get money from the so I, skins I, that you sell? I don't have a, an affiliate okay. setup. I generally, I mean, I generally am not a, I, I don't do many, many in terms of, when it comes to affiliate links, yeah. I don't generally do much with anyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of sponsorships, those have gone well. I've had some weird experiences. Uh, so I think it was last year, or maybe when, when I when I was working basically, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna mention the brand name again, but uh, a brand came in and they, it was a really good offer. Like what they were offering me in terms of money was a lot. Yeah. But one of the clauses in the contract was I can't say anything negative about the brand for a year. Whoa. And that was something set in stone. They were not willing to negotiate on that. And you know, it was, it can be a tough de decision because yeah. at the end of the day, like, especially when you're working full time, like comparing you the amount of money. You have to be able yeah, it's to. Like, wow. Like, they're offering me that much right. like you know that's <laughs> maybe it is worth me shutting up for a year yeah but, but at then, the same time you have to, to do my your guns. job yeah, yeah so because the audience subscribes to me for mm -hmm. my honest opinion yeah. and this is the thing um I, I i have that i've built up that respect uh and that honesty with mm -hmm. um my audience for that time right and it's taken me a long time to build that trust and that's interesting that I've never heard of a brand that explicitly yep. says that. Cause yeah. even, you know, I've been doing a lot of videos with Intel and that's something that was like, okay, we got to make sure that I can talk about these computers in yeah. like a truthful way. Right. Yeah. And so maybe you have to be less intense about it. Hmm. Like, oh yeah, the webcam being right there is not the best. And like, you know. So yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's funny they mentioned that because in my videos generally I'm constructive in my feedback. Right. Right. And I think it's important to do that because brands are not there to give us crappy products. Right. Right. They want to sell products at, uh, and they want our feedback. So I'll give you a perfect example. Um, last year we had uh, the Samsung uh, Galaxy S8, right? A uh, couple of the things that I fed back on in my review were that I love the phone all around. It's absolutely great. The fingerprint scanner is in a bad place. It works well, but it's right up near the camera which is not an ideal place for a fingerprint scanner. Um, it's not got stereo speakers, for instance, so there's only one button firing. So again, you can cover up easily. It doesn't give you uh, a great listening experience when you're watching media, etc. And obviously Samsung, not only my video, but they saw that from other videos. 2018, the S9 addressed both of those issues, yeah. right? So you have a fingerprint scanner in a much better position. You've got stereo speakers now, mm -hmm. which sound much better. Again, similar thing happened with the Note. And I think that's a perfect example that you can be constructive without being, oh, yeah. like, you know, just. Because if you become a channel that's constantly bashing things, yeah. one, you're not gonna get brands that wanna work with you. Exactly. And two, you're probably not gonna get people who wanna work with you either. Yeah. Because it's like, I don't know, I think it's with anything, if, what you're making is circling around negativity. And I understand that is, it's very easy to be upset about everything nowadays. Um, but there's there's nothing that people are gonna wanna stay for. I mean, yeah. that's very heavy. Like we got, we all got Twitter feeds to be depressed about, you know? Yeah. We got the news rolling 24 seven exactly. and stuff. So if 
yeah, constructive criticism and that's key. Shaping it in a productive way is yeah. key. And I mean, heck yeah, it's competition. The fact that we have YouTubers who are telling the truth now mm. and calling, you know, calling out people in a productive way to say, hey, why does this phone have this and this phone that I'm paying double the money doesn't? Mm. This doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing a lot with, um, or my personal journey with laptops recently. Yeah. Um, since I haven't gone over to, to the dark side in a while to the Windows land, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm using these machines and I'm like, oh, mm. this is almost as thin as my MacBook. Yeah. And oh my gosh, now these machines have stuff that my MacBook doesn't have in terms mm. of ports. Yeah. And single handedly, I think ports is what got me over to the other side. Yeah. So I'm like, how do you take away the SD card slot? Mm, why, yeah. do, why do you do that, Seth? <laughs> why did they do that to us? This is this is the thing. I mean, ports. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on ports? Headphone jacks. Does it infuriate you? So I, I mean, for smartphones, I think now it's something that I've kind of got used to, mm. just because. AirPods. It's, you do you know, use AirPods? I don't because they don't stay in my ears. Oh, so that's so sad. I've got. Uh, I don't know if it's the shape of my ears, but like. I need something that actually hooks in. Gotcha. Uh, if it doesn't, then they will fall AirPods, out. AirPods, like, changed my life. Yeah. Best invention from Apple since iPhone. Yeah, no, I mean, like, I hear so much about but then it's just for me, like... That sucks, yeah, that doesn't useless, fit. Because like, yeah. they, they will keep falling out. And I've actually witnessed a guy who dropped his iPods, uh, AirPods in... Uh, well, this was in the, in the London Underground, yeah. equivalent to your subway, and just on the track. Just in the... Oh. And he was like... He was about... Because, I mean, it was... It was... There was no train coming, and he, he could have easily just reached it. But this woman went crazy. She said, no, do not go to get it. You know, I'll pay you for them, and this and that. And he was just like... He panicked, and he didn't... He didn't... Because it was... It wasn't... It didn't fall that down. Right. But, I mean, just that fear of you know them fall in it's um, like oh 75 dollars yeah, goodbye yeah that's it yeah. so i mean like for me it's just like if i'm walking out and about and i am like going up and down it's just like i need something that kind of hooks in so i i, I don't use airpods but i mean when it comes to ports yeah i'm not hugely bothered about the 3.5 what's your main Ninja. laptop is it the surface book or uh so i, I, I see I've that been using the surface book too but also i think my primary laptop overall has to be the xps 15 yeah Oh, I love it. Uh, so it's actually last year's model, uh, but it's got all of the ports. All of the ports. <laughs> you've got full size USB. You've got yeah. USB Type C with Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. You've got an SD card slot. It's mm -hmm. funny because just right now, um, before we came here, so we've been out shooting me yeah. and uh, David, uh, and I was like, David, can I have the SD do you, card? Do you need dongles for that computer for the new Razer Blade since it's thinner? What do you mean? Do you need dongles? Do you have an SD card slot in there? No, exactly. So I asked him for the SD card. USB yeah, so I asked him for the SD card, right? And he's like, oh, but do you have an adapter? I'm like, I don't need one because yeah. I can just put it directly into my XPS 15. Mm -hmm. Boom. There Boom. you go. Because <laughs> so. that's, that's what I'm saying. And that's, again, I'm right in between if I ever get my Razer Blade 15 back from mm. uh, the manufacturer. Mm. Um, I can tell the Razer Blade, okay, that 1070 max q design oh that graphics card is so good it's so fast but yeah. just because it's missing that one sd card slot it has pretty much all the ports mm -hmm. but the sd card slot yep. and i'm like razor it would have been so easy for you to just put because exactly. in my brain it's so easy to market that laptop to both gamers and creators but it oh, seems yeah. like they're strictly focused on the gamers yeah. um so that was a miss i yeah. was like come oh, on thing, yeah, i don't guys. like I don't like carrying around like because all it takes is you forgetting no the dongle, dongle right? And it can yeah, it can just like say you if you're like if you go to the office, yeah. you take yeah, you travel a lot as well. Mm -hmm. And if you're somewhere and you're like, okay, I need to edit video, but I can't, and then you have to spend time going out, get an Uber, yeah, get it's just wasting time, and especially in our field of work when sometimes you need to get a video up ASAP, you can't afford wasting mm -hmm. that time. That is so to true. To get a dongle, and this is where this is one of the reasons why I still like have my XPS 15. Yeah, and I really do enjoy using it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great computer. Yeah, I've been so. having fun with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so changing gears a little bit because mm -hmm. I haven't really talked about this at all. But you being a UK creator, yes, I'm curious to hear your perspective on this like we're not getting all brexit on y'all although i know that's happening right now right oh it's crazy i it's, mean it's I, a mess right now in the oh UK. my gosh i so i've been on this uh 
crazy shoot and all of the crew has been uk yeah so basically half the time they've had their phones like listening to all of like the news networks and stuff so i've mm. kind of been getting that perspective mm. um which is honestly a good change of pace because usually it's all donald trump so yeah. i'm glad you guys have your own problems <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> but yeah but europe yeah the uk mm-hmm. so recently article 13 yes um so it was passed in one part, but then it's still so waiting it's, it's, to be confirmed or something? It's been passed. As far as, as far as I'm aware, it's been yeah. passed, but the wording hasn't been finalized. Right. So I was actually in Berlin for the YouTube Creator Summit. Okay. And the big thing there, the big topic of discussion was Article 13. Mm. Uh, it's really worrying, uh, of course, because, I mean, in a nutshell, if people don't yeah. know what it is, it will basically mean that um, platforms such as YouTube would be held accountable for any uh, copyright. User generated yeah, content. User, rate, user generated content which infringes copyright. Mm-hmm. And obviously YouTube is not gonna take that responsibility, which right. means that, you know. Cause they already have content ID. They already have ways to somewhat enforce music on the platform. Mm-hmm. Maybe if people just writ videos, like, some people think that there's art there's like no infrastructure like they have the infrastructure for that yeah. but when you're talking about every single piece of content yeah it's crazy that starts to put a filter yeah. on the internet right and there's 400 hours of video being uploaded onto youtube every single minute which oh. is crazy so <laughs> it is obviously it's, it's impossible for them to check that and Speaking of content ID, I have to say, I mean, I've been very critical of it in the past, Mm -hmm. but recently I'm not sure if you've seen the new feature on YouTube where you actually have now within your creative studio uh, a content ID section where if somebody- They're making multi-channel networks just useless by the second. This is the thing, (laughs) multi-channel networks. I mean, I thought they were already extinct, but I mean, like I'm still getting emails every day. Yeah, I know. Like, oh. But that was one of the main reasons why at least me, I was staying with a multi-channel network Mm. because they were very good at claiming stuff. Um, And that automatically just goes under, you know, but now it's like YouTube's doing the work for you. Yeah, exactly. So you don't really need it. It's just all there. But I mean, like, that system is really good because mm-hmm. essentially for anybody who doesn't know right now as a as a content creator i can go into youtube and i have a section where it's actually gonna show me if there's anybody who's re-uploaded my mm-hmm. videos it'll tell me how much percentage of my videos has been re-uploaded mm-hmm. maybe it's like 20 percent, and i can kind of like review that video okay they're just referencing something fair enough or if it's something that they've how completely cool ripped technology, off. technology, by the way. It is. That's and, crazy. And I appreciate that because this is something that I've been complaining about for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, especially when the whole monetization thing wasn't in place where you had to have a thousand subscribers mm-hmm. and 4,000 hours of watch time before you can start monetizing content. And uh, this is something, again, that I'm very, I think is very positive. People because, were freaking out about that. But yeah. the other side of things was, well, random YouTube channels can't pop up, rip yeah. content and monetize your own content. Exactly. And that's something that was happening a lot to me before. And it was something mm-hmm. that I was quite vocal about and very annoyed about yeah. because I'd have videos, my own videos with my face on, which would get more views Ooh, on another channel. You're kidding. Seriously. And it was super annoying. And the process of actually reporting that was there, but firstly, I'd have to find it. Right. So, I mean, there'd be thousands of videos, which I wouldn't see, right. but if I came across one, okay, now I got to put the link inside this form. I have to fill out everything every single time. It's not like autofill or anything like that. I have to copy and paste like details in every single time. And then I just used to give up because it yeah. was pointless. It was such a bad system, but YouTube have improved that. Mm-hmm. So again, content ID has improved for content creators, original content creators, the music thing has always been there for a long time, mm-hmm. especially for bigger record labels. They can monetize oh, yeah. content. Don't you dare try to upload a video with Taylor Swift or Kanye in there. Exactly. Don't you dare. Yeah. But I mean, even like what we had recently with uh, Drake's tune, recent one, which where everybody was kind of yeah, like yeah. doing the car thing. I mean, again, the amount of money they probably made from mm-hmm. all of those videos and being uploaded. Yeah. And that's such a good example yeah. of what how Article 13 can really jeopardize the nature of the internet yeah. in its virality yeah. and it was interesting because i i went on youtube's website and they said let's see they, they said article 13 is part of european copyright legislation created with the intent to better protect creativity and find effective ways for copyright holders to protect their 
content online. And they said, we support the goals of Article 13, but mm -hmm. the version written by the European Parliament could have large unintended consequences that would change the web as we know it. Like, yeah. what is half of the internet? Music covers, yeah. reacting to things, yeah. taking songs and putting crazy dances to them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, labels have the liberty to, you know, say, oh, I, I'm going to make most of the money off of that video. Yeah. Um, and so... It's actually all of the money, isn't it? Like, yeah, I the think things. they actually struck up something where okay. like artists who do covers, okay. I think they actually now yeah. get like a little bit of a percentage yeah. of that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, it's interesting because now if there's a filter and this you could say okay this is only the uk right mm. but or only europe um but users watch in europe so if your videos are getting views from europe that's going to affect not only the creators but the viewers who are watching your stuff too yeah so it really affects everyone it's it's, it's massive like it'll have massive impact yeah um i really hope they can come to yeah. a compromise and change the wording mm -hmm. so it doesn't unintentionally yeah. affect all of these things yeah because um, going back to the drake thing that would literally yeah. stop that from happening yeah. from the beginning and that would actually have a very negative impact on the music label yeah. and the artist because uh, a, a very big element of that track and how it became so popular were the these meme. videos yeah exactly the meme. So all of these, so I mean, that would actually have quite a negative impact. So the the intention of Article 13 would be uh, would be mm -hmm. negative for that situation. Right. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, so I hope they can really do that. Otherwise, it's going to be quite problematic. I'm not sure um, how things would work for me as a UK, you know, UK content yeah. creator, how I'd upload videos. Um, Just move to LA. Well, this <laughs> is funny. <laughs> I mean, do, do you have that urge? New York, well, LA? Well, see, this is the thing. I mean, it's like everybody's like um, been saying that I should move here because I spend so much time here. I mean, literally this month, I've spent two days in the UK. That's so so funny. it's crazy. Uh, but your, your rent's probably cheaper, though. If you, huh? if you I feel like yeah. the, the burbs oh. of London are going to be cheaper than well, the even thing the is, burbs I'm, I'm, here. I'm not in London. I'm, I'm north of London. Okay. I'm in Leicester. Uh, if anybody true. knows See, where Leicester is from. how rude of me to just yeah. assume that you were in London. Obviously, everybody I'm from the UK is I'm in so London. I'm so sorry. Right? I just assume if you're a YouTuber, <laughs> you're either in London or Brighton, right? Okay. It's one of the two. No, so I mean, so I'm based in Leicester, which is a couple of hours north okay. of London. Uh, a few people might know where that is. Shout out to anybody who does Go know. try to find him. Here's his yeah. address. <laughs> just kidding. So, um, yeah, I mean, we went to LA and just kind of seen the space and yeah. like how there's so many creators around here in new york um i don't know i mean i i wouldn't mind doing a bit of a thing where i'm kind of here and there mm -hmm. so maybe spend uh you know a couple of weeks or a month here and back as well mm -hmm. it's just that you know i've got my family and right. everybody over there just you know my friends uh the important stuff yeah you know yeah, that, you know yeah, that, yeah, yeah. those those things family youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's just you know kind of striking a balance as well yeah. um i have a house um, okay you know. so you're like a responsible adult with yeah. responsibilities I, yeah, congrats so, by the way yeah thank you well this is the thing Huge. so just having that balance so i mean i'm traveling so much though it would be nice to kind of maybe have a base here yeah. um you know i can always come here and you know i've got lots of friends who i can work with mm -hmm. um you know 368 i can work out of as well um so i don't know we'll see uh, if article 13 doesn't like get sorted out then maybe I will have to yeah. look at working My from here. thing, I mean, you might <laughs> not know the answer because it's probably very complex, yeah. but with Brexit happening and UK separating from the EU, does yeah. that make you immune to the European legislation oh, yeah. of it, Article 13? I, I, I was I was joking about this. Because like, I, I don't like to go political, <laughs> but it's just like the, the one good thing that might come out of Brexit will be... Like no Article 13. No Article 13. Yeah, I mean, that so, would be interesting because the, the UK crew that I've been hanging out with recently yeah. is all... Because basically in the Twitter sphere that I'm in, it's just, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. But it's interesting to hear it from the perspective of like just middle-aged people who kind of have more of an even view. And mm. it just, it sounds like the EU does stuff that is not in benefit for the uk maybe sometimes or just the better of the whole it's a lot of different people a lot of different languages a lot of you know yeah um, i mean a lot of 
politics is complicated. I'm not sure if you saw the recent like stuff. Obviously, there was uh, Mark Zuckerberg who got questioned by Congress, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. then now it was uh, uh, Sundar. Google, and but that's what I'm saying because. Yeah. I am so basically finishing that thought they're basically like there's so many problems but the way they're fixing it is not right that there seems is. like the consensus yeah. with Brexit right yeah but then going back to the article 13 thing and all the hearings that have been happening here in the states yeah I mean did you see the videos where the old farts in Congress were trying to be <laughs> like well my phone yeah if I go from here to there yeah. is Google tracking me yeah. And the CEO of Google is literally like, well, I would have to check what apps you have running yeah, and location exactly. services. Yeah. And, and they were like, no, you're ignoring is, the question. You're ignoring the... I'm yeah. like, and he was talking about... Uh, it's funny because he was talking about an iPhone and then... Like, he, was he was talking to like, the CEO of Google. That's, that's not... And it's like, you're talking to the CEO... And this is, this is yeah. the thing. I think Article 13 is another result of that. People mm-hmm. who don't understand the internet Why are making they making decisions. regulations around it? They shouldn't it. be doing that. This, this is the biggest problem <sighs> that you have people... I mean, when the whole thing uh, recently uh, about net neutrality... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even net see neutrality, that word. yeah. It's like a tongue twister. Net <laughs> yeah. neutrality, net, net neutrality. neutrality. Right. When all that happened mm-hmm. again, it's just like, it, you know, you kind of scratch your head and think, how is this happening in 2018? But mm-hmm. this is a problem. Like you have people who don't use the internet, don't understand the internet, making these rules. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be the case. And it seems that Article 13 is again a result of that, yeah. unfortunately. And when it's so many people's lives, I mean, not just people, but the baker shop that was around the corner that was owned by an 80 year old their online business might be booming Hmm. because of their youtube channel you know instead of the foot traffic so you never like it affects everyone it does it affects everyone so it's like politics seems so miserable i never want to go into them but it seems like we need (sighs) young blood we We need people who know what they're doing or even it doesn't matter you don't have to know what you're doing you just need a good perspective yeah. that's different it has a perspective of the people you know hmm. anyways this isn't a political podcast but uh. <laughs> it's I, I feel like it's worth talking about when it directly affects it us does. you know it and does a lot of these things yeah. do affect us like as article 13 is a perfect example it's yeah. going to affect every creator it's um, so close to home yeah i mean again it's going to affect every creator in the world not mm-hmm. just in the eu uh we all have audiences from europe and that would potentially mean that they wouldn't see our content. So the, it's, it's, the impact is massive. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, everybody's trying to raise awareness. Uh, I haven't been as, I've just not had time. Like that's, that's all it is to be a bit more vocal about it. Maybe make a video to raise more attention mm-hmm. towards it. I'll clip this up. So, we can put it on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> there you we go. Can go into boom, that, but boom. yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, guys, just do some research, check it out, see mm. what you can do. I mean, at this point, there might not be a lot that you can do, but mm. just voicing your opinion, I think, is always a positive thing. Um, do we have any last questions from the peanut gallery over here? <laughs> do you have any uh, any spontaneous questions? for? Rests. Okay. All right. <laughs> Saf, do you have anything you want to put out in the world? Any any words of wisdom? Anything to wrap this up? What, what was going through your head when you had the choice to either quit your job or to stay and not do the cool holiday movie with Casey. What was going through your head? Well, I mean, if if I'm honest with you, it was it was quite an easy decision. Um, Casey is obviously awesome. Uh, I love how he looks out for other creators, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, somebody I look up to a lot. And because of the uh, the decision, like of going with Samsung to and Casey to New York for the project or carrying a working I, I think I, I needed that push mm-hmm. really uh because since then i mean so many opportun- opportunities have come up yeah. I've it's kind of a snowball effect it right? has yeah and this is the thing i think i was limiting myself a lot um i loved my previous job and loved the people that i work with um but i think it was time for me to kind of move on mm-hmm. and explore new opportunities uh and it's been great i've traveled pretty much the world yeah. uh, I, uh something i've always wanted to do and i don't think i would have been able to do that otherwise um so yeah very fortunate very blessed uh traveling does take it out of you and <laughs> this is the thing i mean i'm like right now i'm like if a company isn't gonna pay me a lot of money i don't really want to 
go far. This is this I'm, is it. I'm tired. Yeah. I mean this is the thing. We keep we keep complaining about this, but like I know a lot of people watching might be like, Oh, these YouTubers complaining. That probably about did sound pretty perfect, bad, right? Perfect little lives, <laughs> complaining about traveling business class around the world. Um, it's taxing. Yeah, it, it's it, it is I mean like obviously we're just human so editing emailing oh, yeah. it's not just, it's not it's like constant. we're ship uh, sipping chardonnay on the yeah. plane and, the and thing just is, kicking back this, you this know? is something i mean uh, i'm not sure if you talk about this much as well but the internet is all about sh- especially instagram is about showing the best version of your life mm-hmm. right best version of yourself and this is something that i think you know uh we're seeing a lot of you you know a lot of people a lot of youtubers sort of going through you know breaking down mm-hmm. and like you know burning out uh, and this is something that I think is is interesting because a lot of people don't see the other side of it. Right. That there is a lot of work involved. Um, you know, when you're traveling and you have to do like a, it was a 30 hour journey for me to go back from Hawaii to the UK. Oh it's my like, gosh. stop complaining. You went to Hawaii, like stop <laughs> being a- 30 hours out of yeah. plane, yeah. But th- 30 hours like, you know, like with all the transitions and like mm-hmm. going from one place to another. And then going through an event straight after. Yeah. So it's just like, I I had to go straight to an event, uh, the OnePlus event, and then come back here. Um, So my my channel, like a lot of the audience has been complaining, like, Saf, where's the camera comparison of this phone? And it's just like, I'm sorry, I've just not had enough time physically to do it. And it's something that I'm hopefully going to try to get back into Mm -hmm. once, um, you know, I'm I'm, I'm a little bit more settled from traveling and not constantly jet lagged. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's amazing being able to do that, being able to kind of just sit here and do this mm-hmm. podcast with you. So yeah. it's awesome. But um, it is something that you have to try to balance with Definitely. pushing out content. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, I, I, I'm not sure if you saw this, um, because of all the burnout that was happening on YouTube recently, uh, YouTube on their Twitter kind of posted something that taking a break is okay and it's not going to affect your channel. And then everyone was like, oh, yeah. Hmm, well, according to statistics, guess what? It, it's not okay exactly because this is the thing and i yeah. thought that was you know from youtube's point of view that was quite ignorant because youtube is so massive mm. and there's so much variety of content out there so yes there might be certain very very popular creators who have a very dedicated fan following who can take a break for two months maybe six months and come back and they would still have that same passionate following i know if i did that i would lose a lot of interest in my channel and I would not get the same amount of coverage that I would normally do. And it's crazy for the entity YouTube to say that because they know that they have set up an infrastructure that doesn't deliver your videos to the people who have subscribed to your channel. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not a thing. Hmm. A lot of my viewers are people who find me on the discover page. Yeah. You know, it's cool that over 400 K people have decided to hit that button, but that only means that yeah. like, that only means that those people decided that they wanted to hang around once, yeah. but because it is so saturated and because it is so algorithmic, yeah. people watch what's on their home feed. So if you get out of the system and you get out of YouTube's algorithm, yeah kind of toast it you is. can't take breaks <laughs> you can't this is the thing and but i mean like justine mentioned something because I, I i had a like chat with justine on my yeah. channel uh, and she mentioned something that was really quite important and she said that we don't own these subscribers mm-hmm. and youtube is giving us a platform for free right right so essentially they can they can do what they want right right we're also I, making the money yeah I, 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 and i get that right yeah. from that point of view but as you said at the same time YouTube is nothing without content creators. But then again, there's so much content on there Mm -hmm. that, you know, I remember when like looking like five years ago, I was probably subscribed to like 30 channels and Mm -hmm. I'd watch pretty much everything they'd put on. Now I'm probably subscribed to like 200 channels and I don't watch everything. Otherwise I would just be watching YouTube. (laughs) So I know the atmosphere and environments change, but I think, yes, it's not easy for YouTubers Mm -hmm. to take a break and just be like, hey, okay, I'm just going to go away for a month and come back. It doesn't work like that. It's like, nah. And that's why also I think it's also done another shift where I think two, three, four years ago, there was such a heavy demand for that daily content, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's shifted away from that because of the saturation Mm. like people want to spend their time wisely so it's like people don't want to spend their time on a 15 minute video of just you like brushing your teeth you Mm. know now it's like i i feel like they're demanding curation if i have a video 
that it's about a camera that's in the title, but mm. how dare I spend the first 30 seconds talking about something else? Yeah. Dislike, yeah, you know? Exactly. So I feel like people are really coming to the platform with expectations of being yes. satiated in those five, 10 minutes and yeah. nothing else, right? Yeah. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta cater to the platform. And if you, you wanna do. be the top 1%, if you wanna have the you know million subscribers, you gotta put in that work too. Yeah. Cause yeah. I mean, so, it doesn't, you know, there's a reason why you're traveling all the time and spending yeah. 30 hours on planes and stuff. Yeah. It's like, you're getting it, yeah, you know? Exactly. So if you want that extra life, you gotta put in the extra yeah. work. Yeah, you gotta buy a card, um, you gotta, like I've saw there's a clock that you've got up there. Yeah, which yeah, is just, just work, work hard work, work, 24 work, seven. Work, work. Yeah. Put a couple of breaks in there maybe. <laughs> Cause that's work, not work, healthy. Work, that's work, not work. healthy, Sarah. <laughs> I know I'm going into 2019. My yeah. goal is to deliver on all my timelines for the people I've already committed to, mm. but not accept anything else until I have all of my life in order. Yeah. Cause I, I've been I in the phase important. of just like accepting, well, not everything. Cause yeah. I am very like, selective on who I work with in terms of brands, but I've gotten the opportunity to work with some really dope people. Um, so it's hard to say no, right? It when is. you're so excited and like, yeah, yeah, oh, another course. like Intel, let's see, yes. Yeah, yeah. These are people who I've dreamed, like I would have yeah, never yeah. dreamed of working with. Um, but at the same time, there's only one Sarah. So I either gotta start hiring people or mm -hmm. I gotta start saying no, or like a combination. Yeah. That's 2019 goal. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's important. And it's also, I mean, I think it's an opportunity for upcoming creators as well mm -hmm. there's you know i think brands are now realizing i remember when i initially started like brands did not take us seriously yeah. at all right they were going for traditional uh advertising yeah. marketing methods so and they would not take us seriously it would just be like you just like yeah well, you make prank videos that's what the reputation that youtube has had uh and content creators online content creators generally had i think now they're opening up to seeing that this is where the audiences are and they're appreciating the content that we're making and i think it's a great opportunity for upcoming creators who want to kind of be in this space that you know right now i've seen lots of smaller creators maybe with 10 20 000 subscribers who are getting invited to lots of events are getting lots of brand deals the first brand deal the first event i was invited to i had 200 000 subscribers and the first real sponsor I had was when I was probably in around three, four hundred thousand subscribers. So it's changing. It's changing. It's yeah. changing. So it's a good opportunity. Soon there will be like micro influencers, people with five hundred followers. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> who knows the the world of influencer marketing? It's endless. Of course. It's endless. Um, but Sal, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for having me. And where can people find you on the interwebs? Of course, everything will be linked in the description below. Yeah. But if they're too lazy to go down in that description. Just Hit me up with some links. Super Saf everywhere. Super Saf. Yeah. Nice and easy. Um, Facebook. Is that your YouTube Twitter. as well? Yeah. Backslash. Slash, yeah, yeah. Super Saf. Super Saf. Instagram. Nice. Twitter. I said See, Facebook first. I don't know why I said Facebook why first. Fa who cares about Facebook? I just, it just came. Like, I think it just. <laughs> yeah. That's an advantage of having the same handle everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's a branding tip. No matter. Yeah. It doesn't have to be your full name. But if it's just the same everywhere. Consistency is important. Huge. Yeah. Huge. So super safe everywhere. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. Yes. Make sure guys to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to this podcast. Um, and until next Monday, stay peachy, keep creating. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's Yay. been fun. Cheers.